Hey guys. Uh, next ticks or no, next packs. RGD. So, got myself a friend. I actually say, oh, it's one pint. At 11% alcohol, that would be 0.11 pints of alcohol. So I'm not quite, um, I don't know how much a pint is. 650 milliliters. I do know how much a pint is because it's set on the bottle. Anyway, it's been a while since I did one of these with the camera. I figured it should be one when I was drunk. And uh, I was drinking. Oh, pretty much. Oops. Oh, pens are going everywhere. So yeah, we're gonna RGD. Basically how RGD works when I draft it is we draft uh, blue, red, green, and then we win. That's the big plan. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens though. Oh, possibly I will like, you know, become inebriated shortly, more inebriated, at which point we'll see what happens. Perhaps, like, I don't know, it'll be before I open my steam vents and breeding pool. This is a, uh, accidental ad for alcoholism. Actually, I drink much less than my videos when I'm playing. It's just about every time I ever drink while alone or get drunk with friends and then I'm alone, I decide it's a good t idea to play magic. Uh, Fangtail seems like a thing. We can transmute Grozoth for any 9 casting cost. Thing. Wow. Uh, ahem. <clears throat> Remember Seeds of Strength was maybe okay once, before Green-White became terrible? Scatter the Seeds was a lot better when Green-White was a thing. Like, before there were more packs, is what I mean. Lots of really good green cards. I think what I'll do is grab the Fangtail and hope to table one of these five. Be happy with any of them, or even the Smash, just for the sideboard. The War Torch Goblin isn't so bad either. Alright, so Shambling Shell is like genuinely very good, although much worse, I guess, now that damage doesn't stack. The Dalkinum Trancer is not bad at all. Oh, Peel from Reality is insane now. Yep. I think that's what I'm going to be taking. And by insane, I mean you know, pretty good. Palmbright wings can be randomly really good. I don't know. Benevolent Ancestor. There are like some good white cards, but I feel like white really sort of gets the shaft and packs two and three, so I try to avoid it. You can end up in like blue, white, black, and it makes a good amount of sense. Man, auto include worm. Have played that main deck in constructed. Along with nourishing shoal. And twin cast. Yep, that happened. Uh, so I think it's like either one of these elves. Really? Or Terraria. Like, Elves of Deep Shadow is not so exciting because I don't really intend to have black stuff, but there are a few cards that are like blue, red, or green and have black activation costs, so it's not 
so outlandish that there could be a splash. Plus, it's sort of nice to accelerate. Uh, I think I'm just going to take the Sky Sweeper because it's, you know, absurdly powerful. Really? Uh, okay. We're going to take the Dalkin Dismissor, who is crazy. I have the Storm that used to be a constructed deck. Congregation at Dawn is a super good card. But if you can cast it, your deck probably sort of sucks. So yeah, the problem with just like straight up forcing blue, red, green, it's, it's not so much a problem, I guess. Really? Actually, like, isn't that just crazy good? Um, I guess you need something that makes a token to get us started, but, well, I don't know, Spark Mage Apprentices. Totally fine himself. Nightmare Void, Golgari Brown Scale, and Shambling Shell. We've got the dredge cards going. It looks like uh, green black stuff is flowing a little bit. But I do not care. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Razi's Purification, I think, is just sort of a, a skill tester. Not actually good. Blurgy Informant is pretty sweet. Tidewater Minion also pretty sweet. I guess since I already have a Fangtail, Tidewater Minion is fairly... fairly easy to pick there, probably. There's more stuff you can pick up that combos with Tidewater Minion. Plus, I mean, just a Bounce Land works pretty well with him. And he's a 4-4 four, four for 5. Is that true? Oh, and look at that art. It's like a, uh, it's a, um, it's a uh, Tidewater Minion, I guess. When you watch Channel Fireball videos, they just like insta skip through this dead time between picks. I really feel like, you know, it it adds something to the video to get to build up a rapport with my viewers while my opponents are being extremely slow. This sort of seems like it should be good, right? For four flying creature, if I cast a creature spell. Usually you have quite a few creature spells in your deck. Heard that about creature spells. Oh. And four four flyers are yeah, they're they're quite large. Wait, stinkly to imp? Hold on. Hold on. Okay, we're gonna have to audible a little bit, because uh, we're not we're not gonna pass big stinks. That's for sure. Uh, like, my deck's no longer going to work at all. Because the green cards are so good. Like, I probably want to be blue, black, red if I'm gonna just jump into red randomly. Which maybe I am. <laughs> uh, jump into black randomly, I mean. number of these cards see constructed play, and it's sort of scary because they're all terrible for limited. You have a number of cards, uh, take the War Torch Goblin. It looks like green just is not a color that we can draft. 
which means I guess we're going for it. Is it Guild Pack Two and Rakdos Pack Three? This is not a color combination that I think is terribly good, largely because Rakdos uh, politely is very bad. Uh, yeah. We could draft the just all in aggro deck. We already have Stinkweed MP He's at one two flyer. I mean, I don't know. That one's foil. Coal hauler swine. There are actually worse cards, believe it or not. I think I'm gonna take Smash though for the sideboard. Hey, Dogpile. This is actually playable. Sort of. <laughs> uh. Yes! This is like uh, Lava Axe, except as a zombie. Scarg and Firebird! Uh, I'm probably gonna take that, let's see. Oh. Had to make it difficult. There's a bunch of good stuff here. Let's, let's actually read this. It is a 6-6 six, six flyer for 6. has other abilities. I... I mean... Well... Girl Guild Mage is really good. Like, very, very good. So is the Ogre. The Cronarch is, is not even in contention here, really, I don't think, even though it gets crazy with Peel from Reality. for very low values of crazy. I could take Rule Turf, that would be a very strong pick. A very principled choice. Yeah, we took that one. You guys wanna fight about it? We can fight about it. Leyline of the Meek! Is that worth money? Hold on. I'm going to notice soon. I don't think it's worth money, guys. Uh, the other white ley line, I think, is worth money. I don't think it's actually worth that. What? It's worth five tickets. Why? <laughs> that, that's just silly. Okay, well, I guess I'll take... It's probably only four tickets selling. Maybe even three, but... I will still take it. I'm sad that I don't get my as a boiler works. Yes! Alright. Uh, repeal is here. Repeal is crazy good. It's not actually that crazy. Certainly not that crazy, if you know what I mean. Okay, there's an is it Chronarch and an Oversea Bonds. So really don't have too much to place with the Chronarch. Such a weird deck. Like, I'm really close to drafting a deck that looks like it's from a normal limited format. Which terrifies me. I must be wrong. Flectomancer is pretty good, but I think the fact that you can actually cast Ogre Savant makes him, you know, the better pick. Torch Drake is fine, the Dragonauts also fine. Which one's better? Again, I just don't have that many instants or sorceries, so I think I take the Torch Drake for much the same reason that I took. Savant over Cronarch, although mostly I did that because it's just a much better car. Is it Guild Mage is fine just as a 2-2 with an upside. 
like you could randomly get pretty sick with peel from reality or something. I don't know. He's not gonna like. It's funny, like a lot of the two casting cost stuff has replicate anyway, which makes him pretty dumb, but two two. Alright. Let's take pyromatics. Dalton Plotter is, if I remember correctly, pretty sweet too, because you grab one of their bounce lands and give them a land that they can't actually cast anything with. Uh, I think I'll take the Wee Dragon off now. I could take an Infiltrator's Mage Mark. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be strong and avoid that. Alright, we have to pick another color. I'm actually going to take Absolver Thrall. It's just like a super good card. Um, boarded in against the Mage Mark decks. And so on. Like, either of these seems fine. I think I need a uh, combat trick, I think. My deck is a little more consistent than ooh, zero one with protection. It's a little more hey done. It's a little more consistent than a lot of decks are going to be because I'm genuinely going to be able to end up two colors if I want. I'll probably splash something just because I can't imagine only being two colors in this block. But. I don't know, this is confusing me, guys. I don't really understand what's happening. Anyway, the point is, if I have two colors, I should get more consistent openings. And I actually sort of have a curve, so... Nobody's drafting the mage marks. Good work, people. Hey. Okay. Should have taken train of thought. Well, you know, I don't super want double leap of flame, but I'm also not that upset about it if I'm genuinely going to be able to be two colors. And maybe I am. I just need like a couple more real cards. Probably I have to hide the rune bottles. There's two or less, right? Yeah, that's too bad. Because <laughs> there's a guild mage on a rune bottle. Oh my. I mean, that's a deck. Minus three cards, but. Yeah. Um, the Zelda's obviously, hey, Twin Strike also, like, both of those are maybe just a touch more exciting than Keckling Flames from a power perspective. Well, the Zelda definitely from a, like, long term, if everything goes well, the Zelda's gonna fire out perform Keckling Flames. However, I, I genuinely think that I may want to just be two colors here. Certainly if I do grab a third color, I think I want it to be black. Well, I don't know, it might be white. Like, there's the blue-white guild in this pack. I'm gonna take Cackling Flames. It just seems like the safer pick. So, there's a Helium Squirter, who I think I'm going to take, just because it's like a 3-3 flyer for 5, and it can make other things fly too. How, uh, 
unfair. Uh, but I don't know. I wish I could take Trigon Predator because I think it's my favorite card in like all of RGD. Hey, wait a second. Is that card really good? That card seems pretty good. Uh, I'm definitely never going to have enough black mana to actually make it work there. So we'll let somebody else enjoy that. Like, the only other option, I think, is to take Azor's Chancery right here. And I don't really hate that option. But I think Healing Squirter is just a bit better. Okay. I mean, if I have to, I don't have that many blue creatures. It looks like I have to play the white cards, though. Because that's a, a four power flyer for five, and it actually, like, it turns out it has a good ability, which is weird, I know. But they printed that, <laughs> I guess. understand it. I'm probably not going to get much out of the rest of this pack, but I'm just sort of okay with that. Do I want to play the Simic Guild Mage? Obviously I am likely only getting the blue side of it, and it's hard to cast. However, that can mess with people. guy's totally fine, but I'm concerned that I can't ever cast him. I think I'm just going to take this. It might start in the sideboard and come in places where it's good. I suspect there will be quite a few of those. Okay, so that's mostly nothing. I think it's between Seal of Fire and Healing of Squirter. Seal of Fire seems like a totally fine pick. It's mostly just a shock. Sky Hussar twice. Well, I should have because it counts twice. Uh, I think I'll just take the signal. Can certainly see myself playing that. Kindle the Carnage. Take another healing squirter. Okay, I'm sorry guys, I appear to have accidentally drafted a hey. We're gonna do that. We're gonna make this work. Psychotic Fury and we dragon lots. Yeah, I appear to have drafted a two color deck. Lots of psychotic furies, okay, good. Hmm. 
we can make we dragonauts unblockable. We don't really have anything that like hits people and makes stuff happen. So it's not a super exciting rite of passage. But I'll take it. Shielding plex is fine. Like I don't really think I'll need it, but I can play it as a twenty-third card and I'm not in mind, certainly. Okay. We did stuff. I forgot to get really drunk. Boom, 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 sound effects. I wonder if I could main deck smash. Seems a little bit optimistic. I'm gonna hold off on Kill the Carnage. Bring it in against, I don't know, something with one toughness creatures. Why did I put Green Bottle in? Mysteries. Heal from reality plus Vidal from Dismissor. Sort of dumb. I mean, that's already 17 cards. 20. 22. So I definitely don't have to play any white. I sort of have it for free though. Let's look at blue creatures, which I have. Because, like, I don't have to pay white mana to use Sky Hussar's Hussar. It's forecast. Uh, you just have to tap two blue creatures I control. So maybe I can play that with, like... Did I not get my... Oh, I did. Get my Absolver Thrall, good. Yeah, I'm gonna play Absolver Thrall and Sky Hussar and two white mana, I think. No, I don't actually have enough room for Absolver Thrall. I'm gonna play like this, 16 lands. With a bounce and a signet. A pretty good mana. Uh, do I have any card draw, really? I don't know, man. So excited to send giant creatures to the skies with healing squares. I think maybe I should drop a model the next turn. Well, late game it grabs pyromatics, early game. I could grab a Spark Mage Apprentice. I should probably dig in Train of Thought over Leap of Flame. That would have been a good idea given that I already had that in my pile, and Train of Thought is like a much more powerful thing to be able to grab later on. Is it? Actually, Leap of Flame gives flying, does it? Flying and First Strike. Yeah, okay, whatever. Leap of Flame will be fine. I'm just gonna drop the white completely to maximize Leap of Flame, Flectomancer. Being able to cast it, that is, it's a guild mage. Yeah, let's let's rock this joint. Eight eight, just straight up. I think so. Okay, well, this has been odd. I yeah, we'll see you for round one.